Thanks, Lex. And um, thank you so much for having me along today and um, enabling me to help celebrate National Volunteering Week with you all. Um, it's great to be here and um, looking forward to uh, having a cup of tea with everyone afterwards as well, I, I hope. Um, I've been asked to speak really briefly about Volunteering Victoria, uh, give you a bit of a snapshot of what's going on in Volunteering Victoria. Obviously, you're all across um, what's happening in terms of CFA and probably a bit more around emergency services, but um, more generally. And finally, to talk a little bit about National Volunteering Week and do that in five minutes. That's me. Um, Volunteering Victoria. Well, we're the state peak body for volunteering, so there's a, an equivalent of us in each state. And also there's an Australian body called Volunteering Australia. We also, as well as working together as a group, work with local volunteer resource centres which are scattered around um, Australia in regional and metro areas. So, so all those groups work closely together to promote volunteering. Um, in terms of what we do, there's lots of stuff volunteering in Victoria, a small organisation with just, I think we have about four and a half uh, full-time equivalent staff, which is all part-time except our CEO, and then we have um, a bit over 20 vol volunteers who volunteer with us regularly. We do a range of different things, including professional development and support to our members, who are organisations that are everything from a really small neighbourhood house to um, you know, really big organisations like the Red Cross, so lots of different members, um, to the kind of advocacy work that um, Lex was just saying that I do as a general basis and work with Kate and her team on that type of work as well and research. Um, but what we like to think about the most, and especially in weeks like this, is our work trying to lead a movement around volunteers and volunteering in the state and being really passionate about it. And so it was great to hear what Mick said about um, volunteerism at the CFA and share a lot of those sentiments. Um, at Volunteering Victoria, one of the things that we really recognise is that volunteering makes such a huge difference both in people's individual lives, so for the volunteer, and also often for an individual they might be supporting or working with as part of their volunteering. But um, it also makes such a huge difference for the community. So we like to think of volunteering as a really practical form of social inclusion. It's, it's really like a form of community development, but one person at a time through their act of volunteering, you know, building a sense of community, working with each other. And we do, we do believe, and, and you would all have seen and experienced it in your work, that it has the power to transform people's lives and to transform communities. So we just really like to talk about it a lot. So <laughs> thank you for having me and, and, and it's, it's great to hear about what you do. In terms of what's, what's going on in volunteering, um, I'll talk about some of the key data and just for those of you who are interested, um, pretty much all of this is from the most recent Australian Bureau of Statistics report. They do a report every few years um, called Voluntary Work and the last one was done in 2010. So, in terms of um, what's going on in Victoria and Australia, 35% of Victorians and 36% of Australians, so pretty similar, volunteer. Um, and that equates to 1.5 million Victorians and 6 million Australians. So the, that's the kind of the raw data. Some of the, there's so many things you could say in that. One of the things I find very interesting is you're much more likely to volunteer as an adult if you volunteered as a child. And similarly, you're much more likely to volunteer if your parents volunteered. So that's something, you know, when I think about communities and what we all do as volunteers, it's really heartening um, when you think about the future. It probably won't surprise you that the volunteering rate in our capital cities is lower than in regional and rural areas, and that's pretty much Australia-wide, state-by-state breakdown, that's the case. And um, the highest number of volunteers in Australia come from the 45 to 54 age group, so the sort of I like to think of it as middle age, age group, um, and more women than men volunteer. And in fact, the highest volunteering age group are um, women who work part-time with young kids, which is me, and probably quite a few of you in this room. Um, busy, keep busy people busy. That would be, yeah, that would be part of that. Um, then in terms of other information about uh, the impact that volunteering has, um, there was some work done using some of the ABS data by Melbourne University last year and um, that was to kind of try and understand the economic value of volunteering in Victoria um, and uh, it was estimated as being 4.5, 4.9 billion dollars, so huge. Um, and while that's really important and I guess you'd all uh, know this too, uh, we, we like to think about the fact that volunteering also has such a much bigger social impact. So the economic impact of volunteering 
really amazing, but there's a social impact which is even greater. Um, where people volunteer, I mentioned some of our memberships. Uh, people volunteer in all different sorts of ways. Uh, parents with young kids volunteer the most at sporting clubs and um, in their kids' sporting activities, which makes sense. Everything to um, volunteering at tourist information centres, historical societies, the traditional idea of Meals on Wheels, and of course all the fantastic volunteering that happens in the emergency services space and here at CFA. So it's, it's everything. Um, one of the things that we think about often at Volunteering Victoria is what would happen uh, if we didn't all volunteer like we do. And the, the truth is that there wouldn't be enough money around to pay for the things that we do as volunteers. It'd be interesting to see if there was. Um, but the, uh, much more importantly, um, or more realistically, uh, what would happen if some of those things didn't happen? I mean, the very fundamental work that CFA does every day would uh, not be able to happen in the way that, that it does now. Um, all those community support services that we expect that um, people rely on wouldn't happen. A um, lot more people would be lonely and isolated and unsafe without, the, um, without either the experience of engaging with volunteers or the opportunity to volunteer themselves and get out of the house, which is a huge um, benefit that older people particularly get out of volunteering, um, that social engagement and making friendships. And um, community sport, as we know it, would grind to, the, would grind to a halt. So, um, so, so a lot wouldn't happen if there wasn't volunteers. Um, and so it's really good to have times like now to celebrate and um, National Volunteer Week is one of many great opportunities to do that. We've been really busy, I was telling um, some of the others out in the kitchen before, it's, it was crazy last week and it's crazy but fun this week. Um, lots of things are going on including this morning tea. One of the things we've been doing at Volunteering Victoria is asking uh, leaders of organisations to sign on and say thank you to their volunteers and it's been, it's just, it's gone viral. It's, uh, uh, we're up to 189 CEOs or leaders of organisations have signed at this point in the week, early in the week, and I'm pleased to say that um, Mick Burke and Ewan Ferguson signed on at number 33, so they were very early adopters of the trend, and to say thank you to all their volunteers, so that's, that's good, and there's morning teas and other celebrations like this happening everywhere. So, thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to hearing um, from the CFA volunteers and hearing their stories, and a cup of tea. Cheers.